When people think the French Revolution, it's usually Stormy of the Bastille, the downfall of the French monarchy, liberty, equality, and plenty of guillotine action. But outside of the main story, there was a lot of crazy side hustles and events unfolding all of the time. Here are five of the craziest stories from the French Revolution you've probably never even heard about. Prison orgies? Throughout the revolution, especially during the reign of terror, many individuals accused of being enemies of the revolution were detained in overcrowded prisons. One notable aspect of this situation was that male and female prisoners shared the same cells. Ooh, outrageous! Due to the impending doom many must have felt, and the general French culture of free love, these prison cells reportedly turned into salacious hotbeds of sexual activity. Many prisoners engaged in sexual intercourse with their inmates, despite the squalid conditions leading to rampant spreading of sexually transmitted diseases. From the female perspective, this raunchy behaviour was tactical. There was a general rule that pregnant prisoners would be spared from the death sentence, and many women took all necessary opportunities to fall pregnant while imprisoned. The record-breaking execution. Charles-Henri Samson was a well-known figure during the French Revolution who served as Chief Executioner of Paris. During the Reign of Terror, masses of enemies of the Republic were executed via the guillotine by the order of the revolutionary authorities. On September 3rd, 1792, Samson achieved a dark record by completing 300 executions in a single day. That's 13 an hour, or at least one every five minutes if he literally worked 24 hours non-stop. Sanson also carried out numerous high-profile executions during his tenure, including those of King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. What a resume. The Black Revolutionary. Thomas André Dumas, born March 1762 in modern-day Haiti, was an almost unbelievable figure of the French Revolution, who proved that the ideals of liberty and equality weren't just all talk. Dumas was born to a French noble, Marquis David, and a slave woman, Marie Cassette Dumas, and was notably of mixed race appearance, i.e. he was black. You called him black? He is black. Oh, he said it again! Dumas moved to France with his father as a child and joined the French army at age 24, beginning as a private, and thanks to his exceptional abilities, rose quickly through the ranks. Dumas was a passionate supporter of the Republic and was appointed to the position of general in the French Revolutionary Army. It's really hard to emphasize enough just how crazy it would have been at this time for someone of African descent to be awarded such a high military title in Europe. Despite his contribution to the revolution, he still faced racial prejudice throughout his life, but he truly seized upon the incredible opportunities the revolution created. His son, Alexandre Dumas, the famous author of The Count of Monte Cristo and Three Musketeers, undoubtedly derived inspiration from his father's tales. Goat on trust. The trial of a goat in 1791 is a bizarre episode from the French Revolution which has become part of the folklore of the crazy revolutionary spirit of the time. The story goes that in a small village near Bordeaux, during the early years of the French Revolution, a goat was put on trial for alleged counter-revolutionary activities. The trial involved mock legal proceedings with testimony arguments and even a legal defense. The goat was accused of undermining revolutionary ideals and conspiring with enemies of the Republic by some of the villagers. This absurd situation might have been a satirical response to the widespread atmosphere of suspicion common during the revolution as well as the seemingly arbitrary nature of trials at the time. In the end, the goat was found guilty, sentenced to death and hanged for crimes against the revolution. September Massacre. The prisoner massacres of Paris, often referred to as the September Massacres, occurred in 1792. It was marked by widespread mob killing of enemies of the revolution. People associated with the monarchy or suspected counter-revolutionaries were literally dragged from their prison cells by the hundreds and killed by angry mobs. Because of external threats to France and internal political problems, tensions escalated in Paris, fueling massive paranoia about the future of the revolution. As a result, public focus narrowed in on the loyalty of political prisoners. Rumours circulated that these prisoners would help royalists at any opportunity, and various groups called for immediate action. 
Between September 2 and September 6, angry mobs targeted prisons across Paris, seeking out clergy members and the aristocracy. The mobs killed through various means, including beatings, stabbings and mass drownings. The September massacres resulted in the deaths of thousands of prisoners, and while they shocked many, supporters argued that it was necessary for the preservation of the revolution. Now, is this type of thing ever justified? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. What do we learn from all of this? Revolutions are dynamic events that don't just happen at the highest levels. They affect all of society, from the bottom to the top. New ideas will be tested in extreme ways, in some cases to make a point, and in others just to demonstrate new possibilities. But it truly affects everyone. It's not just an isolated social experiment for the all-powerful. Vive la révolution! Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.